Ich muss mir eigentlich nicht der Film erzählen. Where it meets the electrons. And there, they are accelerated nearly towards the speed of light. If you look, for example, at the cup of coffee you're drinking in the morning, um, you need to look at a range of topics to be able to not to overlook important environmental issues and as well to know where they are coming from. So you need to look at not only global warming, at does it contribute to climate change, um, it may have to be grown in the first place, the coffee, so you need land, you need water, all this needs to be taken into account. As well, you need to look at the whole life cycle of the product, from the raw materials, the growing in agriculture, up to the manufacturing, to the use, you use electricity if you heat the coffee in the morning, if you want to keep it warm, you, heat, you again need electricity to keep it warm if you don't have it in the thermos truck. All these things sound rather complex, and in fact they are, but you need to take them into account to be able to identify really what is a green product. Otherwise, you may solve a problem by just creating another problem elsewhere. With the environmental footprint, we have addressed all these issues. We have developed the method here from the JRC. Where we are now is we have a general guide that is in principle applicable to all type of products and we now need to be more product category specific. So we are involved in the testing phase of 25 product categories like coffee, like fish, like meat, like metal sheets, like construction insulation materials and try to find out what can be more relevant and more specific for those product categories. That will take us until the end of 2016 and after that the decision will be taken how that will be translated into policies.